Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. In today's ClickFunnels 2.0 tutorial, I would like to show you how the checkout element in ClickFunnels 2.0 works and how you can use it on your order forms. But two things before we get to it. First, hit that subscribe button that you see below the video and don't forget to enable notifications to not miss out on future useful ClickFunnels 2.0 tutorials and videos about funnel building. And second, if you don't have your ClickFunnels 2.0 account yet, you can find the link in the description of this video to a free ClickFunnels 2.0 trial. And if you use our link to start your trial, you also will get our ClickFunnels 2.0 course as a bonus to help you shorten the learning curve with this platform. Now let's dive into it. The checkout element in ClickFunnels 2.0 seems to be quite confusing for a lot of users. And recently the team also released something called checkout templates. And then it became even more confusing. So let's start by viewing the checkout templates and I will also show you how to work with them and point out some disadvantages that I discovered. After that I will show you how you can work with the regular checkout element if you don't want to use a template. Let me delete this checkout element and we can start from scratch. When you add a checkout element, ClickFunnels automatically adds a pre-created template of the checkout element, which is also a two-step order form. If we go to the settings of the checkout element, we have different tabs here. First of all, general settings of the checkout element. Second, the advanced settings that we also may use later. Third, we have templates. And last but not least, we have logic, but most likely you will not use this tab. Let's go back to the settings. The purpose of the checkout templates was to make managing the checkout element easier for the users. That's why in the general settings tab, we don't have a lot of settings, as you will see. First of all, we have different checkout states. The guest mode is used when we don't have any information about the customer yet. And the saved mode is used when we already have some information about our customer on file. And this mode will be used for, for example, upsells and downsells. In the next section, you can change the number of steps for your checkout element. Let's go with one step. As you may know, the checkout element itself consists of different components. For example, the header, the product select, the order form and so on. And in this section, you can hide the components of the checkout element that you don't want on your form. While you're using a theme for this checkout element, you still can change how it looks or change the color scheme. For example, you can go with orange or light pink and so on. And after that, we have settings of different components of the checkout element that you can use to change their look. One big disadvantage that I can already point out here is that we can adjust the font, we can adjust the color of the text, of the borders, of the background, but we cannot adjust the size of the font. Same goes for the image. If I go to the order bump section here, which is this section on the left, there is no setting for me to adjust the size of the image or the space that this image is taking. On the regular checkout element, we actually have this setting. Besides that, there is not a lot that you can do in the general settings tab. Let's go to the advanced settings. In this section, you can hide the elements that you don't need on your order form. For example, if you don't want to request a phone number from your customer or a billing form, you can also change the text of the section titles, but we hid them, that's why we don't see them here. You can change the text for the button in the submit and save submit state. And last but not least, you can also select the style for the product. That's the setting that we use to create a quantity selector for our product. That's basically all you can do with the checkout element. While it gives you a pre-created template and this template is already styled for you, it also takes away some of the flexibility in the styling and also in the settings of the checkout element. Now let's say that you don't want to use the checkout template and you would like to build your checkout element from scratch. How do you get rid of this template? You need to go to the third tab that is called templates and click reset. That brings us back to the original checkout element that was there before the update or before the introduction of the templates. If we go to the settings of the checkout element, you also see that right now we have much more settings and more flexibility. There are a few important things that you need to keep in mind when you're working with the checkout element. First of all, that the checkout element itself consists of different components. And if you want to edit this specific component, you open the settings of this specific part of the checkout 
cloud element. And you can see those settings here on the right. For example, if I want to edit this order form, I need to click on the order form and this will open the order form settings for me. Second, to navigate between the elements of the checkout, use the breadcrumbs that you can see here. For example, right now we have the order form settings open and you can see it here by the title here on top. If I want to go back to the settings of the checkout element, I just click on this breadcrumb here. Another example, if I want to open the settings of the order bump, I click on the order bump and now I see all the settings that I can change for the order bump. And let's say I start editing the cart of the order bump component. If I now want to go back to the settings of the checkout element, I can just click the checkout in the breadcrumb. And last but not least, not just the checkout element has different states like guest and saved, but also different elements have different states. For example, if we open the settings of the product select, it has unselected and selected states. And if you adjust the style, for example, if you adjust the background and the colors of this element in the unselected state, make sure that this element looks good in the selected state as well. As mentioned before, when we don't use the checkout template, we have more possibilities to customize our checkout element and therefore more settings. On one hand, it makes the settings of the checkout element more complicated. On the other hand, it still gives you more freedom and more flexibility. If we go to the advanced step, we will not have the settings here that we saw in the checkout template in the advanced step because all those settings are already hidden in the settings of the specific component. Let me give you an example. If we go to the order form, in our template we had this section in the advanced step and as you can see here we have it just in the regular settings step. You can also adjust the size of the text on desktop and mobile and the weight of the text and do much much more. When we were talking about the template I also mentioned the size of the image. If we go to the settings of the order bump and scroll to the bottom, we have the settings for the image here and for our regular checkout element, we can decrease or increase the space that the image is taken, which is not possible in the template, at least right now. The ClickFunnels team, of course, may implement some changes and add those features to the templates as well, but right now the checkout templates feel a bit limited. I will not go into the detail here because editing all those different fields and text is quite intuitive and you can do it in the settings of different checkout components if you know where to find them. I also have multiple videos about the checkout element, for example, how to add the variants of your product to the checkout element or how to use the checkout element to create a one-click upsell or downsell. If you have specific questions about the checkout element, you can leave them in the comments below and I will either help you out and reply to your comment or create a separate video to answer your question. I hope that this video was helpful. If that's the case, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and enable notifications. And I will see you in the future videos. Bye-bye.